Banishers Ghosts of New Eden is the newest game coming out from Don't Nod and Focus Entertainment. If you're going into this expecting a more narrative game like Plague Tale or Vampire, you're going to be quite surprised because this is a full-scale open-world action-adventure RPG with still some story-rich narrative, but definitely not the typical game we see come out of their wheelhouse. This was quite a surprise to me, given the typical games we see from Don't Nod, who are primarily known for Life is Strange. But here we have a you know, full open world action RPG. It has pretty rich combat, there's a fair amount of activities to do, and the story is definitely very solid, which makes sense considering that's generally their strong suit. But either way, let's talk about the game, where it excels, where it fell short, and everything in between in the review. My name's Cowboy, and this is my review based on roughly 30 hours of the game played, having Ooh, gone through one of the endings, and working yourself. my way towards a second ending now. So, with all that out of the way, uh, the first thing I actually want to talk about in this review is going to be the combat, because that Beware. was by far Ooh. the most surprising part of this game to me. Uh, when it comes to Don't Nod, they are not a team that I typically think of at all when it comes to combat. Uh, Vampire's combat was pretty basic. It had a couple like fun, fun power spikes here and there. And the other game that was heavy on combat was Remember Me, which I actually ended up dropping back when it came out, just because I, I did not think it was very good. And here we have a game that actually has pretty rich combat. There's a lot going on. Uh, we have light attacks, we have parry attacks, we have charged attacks. We have different special abilities, we have ranged attacks, and it's just way more than I would have expected from this developer. So, talking a little bit about the combat, we have two main forms here. We have Red and we have Antea. Red's combat is primarily going to be against the Spectres. So we have uh, our light attacks, as I mentioned. We have dodging lights. We have heavy attacks, which also have variable charges. So, heavy, charged heavy, supercharged heavy. Let's see, the longer it charges, the more it's going to build up that little gauge down there. And then we have our Banish, which we can use to do big chunks of damage to a target. Uh, on top of that, we of course have our Rifle, which is primarily what I'm going to be using, considering this is a Rifle build. And then on top of that, we have Antea. Now, Antea is our Ghost Waifu. Uh, she becomes a ghost for reasons that you'll discover yourself if you decide to play the game. But she ends up having a interesting impact in the combat because as we're fighting spirits at the same time we are ooh, let's go inside i'm gonna go inside Ready this thing to walk through it if you are it's gonna be plenty of combat in this place which i guess this is slightly spoilery but i mean it's a ghost game obviously we're gonna be doing some crazy stuff so let's jump into the void uh anyway <clears throat> so Antea's combat chain is different in the sense that she is a manifestation she is a specter and so because of that she is going to do increased damage to anything that's been possessed now a core loop of the combat here is you have four primary specters and those specters are going to end up possessing corpses and when they possess corpses you will then either have to, you'll have to basically defeat the corpse first before you're able to do damage to the actual spirit. Not only that, but one of the interesting things with the, the combat loop of this game is the challenges it typically gives you. So right now, uh, in this particular rift, you can see I have a challenge, more damage on perfect switch, post parry, post run, and post dodge attack damage. So right here, my dodging attacks are doing massive chunks of damage because of that modifier in this rift, whereas my regular attacks are not all that strong. And that's one thing that I had a lot of fun with in the game, because, you know, just the, just that idea of, of adding a, uh, essentially an element into the combat, I found that that was a really fun way to mix things up. It made me move for, or maybe utilize play styles that I may not have previously used otherwise, because it's like, hey, we're gonna boost up this attack, and even if you don't have the perks to necessarily make that particular playstyle strong, in the context of it having that that uh, that boost, it will be strong. So that's something that I personally found really enjoyable with the combat. But uh, and Taya's combat, as I mentioned, is primarily going to be normal strikes. On top of that, we have her spin strikes, which are quite strong even without the buff. And then we have a number of different abilities, which you can see down in the bottom right there. These are unlocked progressively as you continue to play the game. So as things ramp up, we, we get our leap ability, which allows us to charge in, and we get outburst, which is this AOE. We eventually get this ensnare ability, which we can use to root enemies down, uh, which is great if we're playing a rifle build, which we are. 
And then the last one we get is fusion, which is quite late and is kind of a uh, just a fusion boost thing to see. It's uh, a big combat wrap up, which we might end up, up doing that at some point. Uh, but in general, the combat it's it's pretty simple, but at the same time, there's definitely a, a fair amount of depth going on here to the combat. Enough, at least, to, that I found it interesting all the way throughout my playthrough. Um, a couple enemies have distinct move sets that are kind of tricky to handle. These guys, for example, you pretty much have to either get a parry off on them or you have to get a charge attack because they tend to dodge almost everything else. Up. Uh, besides that, I will say uh, there's a fair amount of build variety as well in the combat. Um, well, I mentioned that I am, in fact, playing a, a rifle build. I know it probably doesn't seem that way because I'm barely using my rifle in here, but I'm trying to adhere to the, the bonus perks. And I could still use my rifle to go through this area, but I'll just be getting way more damage in by, by playing uh, to that system that it gave me. But on top of the combat, we obviously have gear sets that are very oriented towards bolstering specific things. Uh, we also have a, a full evolution tree, so... New evolution trees unlock each time Antea gets a new ability, which is quite a few. And one of the really cool things is we can freely swap between these perks anytime we're not like in a rift like I am right now. Uh, but so we have free respecking available. Stuff is limited. So if I take tag team, I can't take pocket of holding or vice versa. So there is definitely some choice in build crafting, but it is really nice that they allow you to freely swap your skills around you know, promoting, uh, trying out different builds. And that also has a lot of synergy with the system we're seeing right here. You know, going through something like this, you might be like, oh, you know, dodge attacks are a lot of fun. I think I want to try out a more dodge attack oriented build. And then you can easily swap on over to that, which is, I think that's a, a really good thing that they did there. Uh, besides that, another element of the build crafting, which I do think fell a little bit short, is going to be in the gear. And the reason for this is our gear... Is going to be very supplemental to the build like i said i'm running a rifle build and you'll notice this has a rifle perk on it rifle perk rifle perk rifle perk rifle perk uh, rifle perk and so everything i'm using right now <clears throat> with the exception of like two pieces of gear it helps it helps to bolster my damage while i'm using my rifle and the downside is even though i have the ability to freely respec gear is actually quite expensive to level up so much to the point where you're probably not going to level up more than one real set. And so it feels like a little bit of a mixed opportunity there because, for example, let's say I was tired of playing the rifle set and I decided I wanted to to play something like this. Um, well, actually, this, this, this would be a good one for a different build. That would be one for a manifestation build. But let's just use this ring as an example, right? Um, I'm going to need an elite gem to hit that, and then I'm going to need another elite gem to hit that. I'm going to need two of the scourge accretions there, and then three more right there. So I don't have the elite gems right now. And there's quite a few pieces I've had where I've had to use like five plus elite gems to get a single piece up. Uh, typically gear is gonna need either elite gems, the scourge accretion, or a, uh, a nest item from certain uh, certain enemies. Let me see if that's one here. No elite gem there. You do need the nest. You just need two elite gems and then another elite gem. So three for that. Uh, but basically the, the nest stilt, the accretion, and the elite gems, these are uh, obtained from doing specific activities in the world and in all cases there's usually a infinite supply of them there are uh, things on the map yeah look at the map in the void uh, but there are things on the map where you know you'll be able to endlessly farm elites to get these gems but those come along with increasing difficulty as time goes on and it gets harder and harder and harder to the point where it's like okay I'm fighting something that's roughly the equivalent of 10 levels higher than me to try and get a gem to upgrade gear and it feels a little bit counterintuitive because on one hand, it's really cool that they they gave that the ability to infinitely farm these things so that you can heal up. But at the same time, it's a little bit weird that we can freely respec at any time we want. Every totem killed but despite that, we really need the gear to pull our build together and the gear gets prohibitively expensive uh, to a certain extent. So a little bit of a weird disconnect there because it's like, hey, have, have all the free respecs you want. You're going to be able to get super, super strong, no worries. But then at the same time, oh, by the way, that you're going to really want thing. your gear to actually make this optimized. And it's going to be a huge pain in the ass to really farm up more than one set effectively. So definitely a bit of just a missed opportunity there because, you know, that's that's a huge part uh, of going through the combat is having a set that supplements your play style 
and I definitely think it's an area that could have been improved um, with with probably just increased resource gain in general because resources did feel quite starved. I mean, I got my, my main set leveled up and that was with a fair amount of farming, but if I wanted to farm up an alternative play style, there's just no chance that's happening without a, a significant amount of farming. And on top of it, the reason that is important is your stats come from your gear primarily. Uh, as you saw right there, finishing that rift, I ended up getting a couple stat points. And every time you finish an activity like that, you're going to get one to three stat points, depending on the activity. Rifts give three. Stuff like elites or nests are usually going to give one. But besides that, the rest of my stats come from my gear itself. So because of that, if I want to do a build that's very focused around strength, I'm going to have to put on strength beer. Or, or if I wanted to do a, a build focused around Antea, uh, I'd want to pump up wrath or pump up wisdom and even if i respect into that i'm not going to have those stats to make that viable so anyway point is it, it's a system that's definitely in need of, of some improvement i think just if the uh if if the you know loot drops were a little bit better things would have have probably lined up let me see what i got hitting an enemy with a manifestation increases damage oh it's finally a rifle chest i looked forever to find a rifle chest and we finally got one nice uh, moving on from the discussion of combat and, and build potential, though, uh, talking a little bit more about activities in the world, which we were just kind of talking about that. So we have a rift, which you just saw. Uh, there are elite encounters, which we can do. There are the nests, which we can do. There are scourges, which are like large, big enemies. Uh, there's different puzzles and whatnot we can solve throughout the world. Red. I and probably one of the anymore. coolest things, at least, is going to be the haunting cases, which we're going to discuss those more a little bit later in the review. Uh, but point being, there is a, a fair amount of activities in the world. But at the yes. same time, I don't think all activities in this world are created equally. In fact, as I worked my way towards the end of the game, uh, I found myself just kind of gravitating towards wanting to or wanted to do more of the hauntings than anything else because everything besides the haunting started to lose their luster to me. The combat was just kind of okay-ish. Um, while I'm doing it, one thing I do want to point out, this is just kind of an off note, but the compass system in this game is phenomenal. So you notice I marked that thing in the map, and anytime I come up to a turn, that you compass is going to swing immediately in the direction I'm supposed to go, which I really like that, because if you're trying to figure out how to navigate to something, the compass does an excellent job of being like, you know, just keep going this way, you're going to get there. Like it immediately, you know, I hit a turn, I'm going to hit a turn up here, and it's like, whoa, hey, go this way. Like, it, it is, Compass does a phenomenal job of tracking. And, of course, it's optional, too. You don't even have to use it if you just want to wander the world and try to figure out where to go. Uh, but but talking more about the, the activities in the world, uh, I think part of it is after you've, you know, there's only so many times I want to kill the same basic ghosts over and over before it starts to lose its luster. And, you know, whether it's a nest of the ghosts or... An elite of the ghosts or Making even the scourge the you know i've done it so many times that it just becomes almost like second nature and i think part of this also ties into the enemy variety so there's there's a decent variety in total enemies but a big problem is the way enemies work in this game actually i shouldn't go do this this is like a a, a side quest that's gonna have a bunch of dialogue probably let's head over there uh the way activities work in this game is <clears throat> or the way combat works, I should say, is that you have a couple different enemies, but you have four main specters. We have a like angry rage type specter, we have a dodge centric specter, we have a ranged one, and then we have the basic ghost. And the idea is these specters are going to inhabit corpses, and then you got to get through the corpse to then have a chance to kill the specter or the ghost, which is you know right there. That was a ghost. If I give one a chance to to possess a corpse, it will. Let's see, so here's here's an example. This is a ghost that's like a currently possessed by the, the dodge type specter. So you can see when I shoot it, it's going to dodge. And one of the things I can do is stun it with that and sometimes get a hit off if I'm really quick with it. Uh, and as I mentioned, when they're in corpse form like this, Antea is going to do a fair amount of damage. That corpse is gonna dodge shoot. that, asshole. But so now that we have... Uh, Here's the ranged one, which right, teleports a little bit. Shot. And you can see we kill the corpse, and then the specter pops out. And now we have to kill the specter so that it doesn't possess another corpse. But the problem is that we only have four specters in the game, which is definitely not a lot. So what this boils down to <laughs> is all of your enemies 
end up being either a teleporter, a dodger, an angry boy, or just basic. And while it's not terrible because there are a, a fair amount of different enemies, so it's like, you know, each enemy has a different role, essentially, it does start to kind of get a little bit monotonous. Just like, okay, you're you're the dodgy guy again. I got to smack you in the face and then shoot you. Oh, you're the angry guy. I'm just going to blow you away. Oh, you're the one that likes to teleport. I'm going to shoot you after you teleport. And I do think that that takes away from the activities in the world a little bit. And it's definitely something that made me gravitate a lot more towards focusing on the haunting cases, which is one of the major things I still have, have left to do that I want to uh, spend my, my time on. Um, Talking a little bit more about the the map in general, um, I will say there's 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 quite a lot to do. Just looking at the map here, we we start over here, events transpire, and then we are brought on over to this region to start. So you have the dark woods, and then that's going to chain into Mount Pleasant and the Harrows and a couple different things that we can do in the marsh. But there's definitely a lot to do in the world. There's a lot of different places to visit. There's a lot of activities to do, and it's definitely. Uh, you know, a good, a good split of locale and environments and places to explore. It's just, I think not all activities have been created equally in this sense, because some just feel like you're, you know, it's the same feeling as like, okay, looks like we're, we're killing this guy again. And I, I don't think that's a feeling you really want in your games. Talking a little bit about the story and morality, obviously we're not going to go into any spoilers here. Uh, but I do think that one of the best jobs they did here was with the actual story of the game. Uh, there is a very big emphasis on gray morality and choice and that, you know, no one is, is pure in this 17th century America. Everyone has, has faults. And a big part of this journey is you essentially being judge, jury, and executioner. So the whole emphasis around being a banisher in this game is dealing with ghosts and solving hauntings. And when you go to deal with the ghost, you're presented with three options. You can either banish the ghost, which would be like sending it to hell. You can ascend the ghost, which would be like sending it to heaven. Or you can blame, which places blame upon the person that the ghost is infecting. This place feels different. And by doing Something so, here. you effectively rip okay, that person's soul you know. out. You kill them, and then since you kill them, the ghost will no longer haunt because they don't have a target to haunt anymore. Now what gets interesting is obviously we are on this journey with Antea and a large part of that is she's a ghost and you know we need to do something with her ghost. And part of that journey and part of, of dealing with her as a ghost gets influence based hiding here on the actions we take we could get something that in these various something haunting cases. So you have this, this double dilemma going on here where... You know, you might have a ghost that's like a huge asshole and your immediate thought is, nah, don't like this ghost. You're, you're, we're banishing you straight to hell. No soul, no nothing. You're gone. But what if banishing that ghost conflicts with the resolution you're trying to get for Antea? Well, now suddenly you have this moral dilemma where it's like, well, do I make the choice for Antea or do I help these other people because this ghost is an asshole? And that was one of the things I really, really enjoyed in my playthrough of this game is just you know being met with these morally gray dilemmas almost constantly as i played there were there were so many of them going on and i definitely think it was one of the strongest points of the game is the story and the choices it that it, it presents you with and honestly really how there's there's just no there is no easy black and white in this game there is no oh everything is, is hunky-dory happy like it's just it's not that kind of game uh, so you know in general if you're looking for for something that's like heavy and you're gonna be like oh man these choices are who they're 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 doing it for me you're gonna have a great time with this game if you're looking for like a happy sit down after work i want to relax and i want a nice story this is not gonna be the game for you man because mm, some of the some some of the hauntings are like oh, oh man some of them are real messed up uh, but so yeah point being I had a, a blast with the story, and I easily think it's one of the strongest points of the game. Uh, talking about graphics and sound, I thought the graphics looked pretty good here. Uh, in general, I'm not really a, a big like graphic stop person. You know, I think you know something like Cyberpunk obviously looks amazing, but at the same time, 
I play indie games that are made with like retro bit stuff. So I'm not huge on graphics, but I think the graphics here look really pretty. I think a, a big part of, of graphics is not just the fidelity of graphics, but also how like the environmental design and how the world looks. And I love how this world looks. I think it's, it's, you know, this is the, I guess you could call this like the fall biome, uh, but it's very pretty. We got, you know, nice variety on the tree color. I think the textures look pretty good. Uh, the combat animations are crisp and flashy. Uh, the banishes when those hit and the sparks are flying off. Those all look good. I think the graphics here look great. Um, I also think the, the, the world design on that note, like going to, to different areas, which we're actually going to hop over to a, a different zone right now. I'm going to go check this out over here, see what that is. Uh, but, but I think they, they do pretty good, pretty good layouts of the world and, and the effects and whatnot. Um, and, and on that note, in terms of sound, I also think sound here was pretty good. There's a couple areas, though, that I do want to call out. Uh, one being there's some kind of weird sound normalization in certain areas. And I think the biggest thing here is the rifle is, is very loud. And there were certain times where I was like inside a cavern or in a valley. And the shooting the rifle would echo and just be like, boom. And you're like, oh, my God, my ears, what is happening? And I mean, it got to the point of looking at uh, looking at my sound options here. Like, I had to put uh, sound effects are down to fifty percent because that is is how obnoxious the rifle was. Like, just real fast, just once, just once. I'm gonna put this all the way up, put it all the way up, all the way up. That's close enough. There we go. Like, man, that thing that pops. And keep in mind that is after the game's audio has already been cut in half by OBS. So yeah, the rifle the rifle just is like, hi, I'm here to blow out your ears, which I'm playing a rifle build, which made things kind of hard. Um, in addition to that, and I don't know if you want to consider this a, a sound issue, but th there's a couple one-liners. I shouldn't say a couple. There's a lot of like one-liner moments in the game where the characters will make like a little snappy remark or make a joke at each other. And there's not quite enough of them. And so the problem I have is like once you've heard a one-liner the like 20th time you're over that one-liner you know like there's there's very few that i'd still hear and be like yeah i like that one um you know i'd have antea blow up a wall and red would be like remind me not to mess with you and then the next wall remind me not to mess with you and then a third wall remind me not to mess with you and i'm like oh god red please fucking stop uh, and that's definitely an area that I think they, they could have, you know, either add more one-liners or have them be quiet a little bit more often. And I don't care what you do, but those are your two options, either less one-liners or more silence. Uh, talking a little bit about performance, the game ran absolutely flawless for me, given I am running on a, a 4090 PC, so things are, are pretty stacked on my end, but I'm playing 4K, everything's set to max, uh, over 100 FPS at all times, just fantastic performance which is always nice to see because no one likes it when you get a new game and the performance is dookie so no performance concerns at all at least on high-end rigs uh and given i know that's not the best metric you know if it performs that well on my rig i'd assume it's going to translate for comparable performance on lower end rigs with settings adjusted uh moving on from performance there's one really big gripe that i have with this game and this may sound minor but the game has no appendix and what I mean by this is so when you think about The Witcher, you know, uh, a big thing in The Witcher to me was like the bestiary. You'd pull it up, you'd figure out what you're fighting, you'd figure out what its weakness was. And then after you knew that, you're like, all right, great, I'm going to go after this target. And this game doesn't have anything like that, which considering the, the different specters and the different ghosts and even all the people you meet, uh, some type of, of bestiary or, you know, just uh, appendices that lists notes about people would be incredibly helpful because there were even cases with this where I would solve a haunting case and then I'd be like, wait a minute, there's that's there's no way that's the whole case. There's there's like that doesn't sound like it, it closed out. It sounds like I'm, I'm missing some information here and the game would be like, all right, time to wrap up that haunting. And I'm like, no, not not time to wrap up that haunting. What do you mean? Like, I want to I want to know more about this. And it's it's one of those, it just, it feels so weird that it's not here. It feels like just a, a, a very simple yet missed opportunity 
to have something like that because we do have we do have that slightly uh looking over at there we go I'm trying to skip through don't want to show too much of the haunting cases uh but so like when we do a haunting case we go here and we get some information about the people involved in it um we have like a little description and then we can go here and it's like do 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 and we have a couple facts and then do 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 and we have a couple facts but that's it we don't have anything else we don't have have anything in terms of like here's a breakdown of the people you've met or the places you've been or the monsters you fought and i don't know it just it feels like that would have made sense here and it wasn't here and it just it, it feels missing that's all i can say so with all that being said what are my final thoughts my final thoughts would be that this is a solid game but ultimately i think it falls short of being a five out of five uh, I would put this at a 4 out of 5. I had a blast playing it. I clocked in... I don't know. Let me... You know what? Let me just... Let me pull up Steam. I'll tell you exactly how long I have. Steam says I have 36 hours played at this point. I don't know. I know some of that's probably just like me accidentally leaving the game on. So I'm probably closer. 30 is probably more accurate, to be honest. Uh, but, you know, you're, you're definitely going to get good value out of this, especially considering the game is priced in at only 50 in a time where everyone seems to be making their games more and more expensive. Uh, but if you're looking for an open world with enjoyable characters and combat that's pretty decent, great build variety, and a story that's definitely going to grip you, I do think it is a solid game. Uh, at the same time, keep in mind the, the, the faults for starters. If you're looking for a build to go with, I would suggest holding off on spending all your upgrade mats because they, while they aren't limited, they are a pain in the ass to farm to get a setup to max. Uh, and then on top of that, just minor things were, you know, a couple a couple hauntings where I would have liked to have more information, the lack of appendices, uh, the little little sound quirks here and there with the one-liners. Like, it's very minor stuff, but... Oh, actually, I forget enemy variety. Enemy variety is definitely... Uh, enemy and, and uh, event variety are definitely the weakest points of the game by far. Uh, but still, I think this is a, a fantastic game for what it is. And in particular, I <clears throat> I do have to give I do have to give credit to to Don't Not Here because the they are not a developer that's itself. known for like open world RPGs and uh, you know just combat like this. Like that's not their forte. I mean, besides Vampire and Remember Me, they're they're known for like narrative almost pure story games and it's crazy to think like the people that did life of strange are like hey here's a game about banishing ghosts and whooping ass all of a sudden it just completely came out of left field for me so you know definitely credit given where credit's due because i remember playing remember me i dropped that shit part of the way through i remember playing vampire and i just kind of like started a murder hoboing towards the end uh and this i was engrossed all the way to the end so Either way, that is going to wrap things up with my thoughts of the game. Uh, I will be streaming it, doing some haunting cases now that the game has launched, and then trying to get a second ending, which I'll slap into the Let's Play. But that should clock in around 38 episodes. I'll be dropping a couple episodes every day. Uh, but either way, thanks for coming on by, checking out the review. Let me know your thoughts below, and I'll see you next time.